Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Just Because You Can Doesn't Mean You Should. Now that my, um, my GTEC A10M dual filament mixed printer is back functioning well again, thanks to those two dual gear extruders that I replaced the Titan clones with, one of the things I've always wanted to try was to see if I could mix different types of filament. So today, let me move the camera up a little bit. So today we have a spool of Pryline. I don't know if you can see it on there. Pryline PETG in black. And we have a roll of the long gone and not lamented um, Maker Geeks Pearl Series PLA. Now one of the reasons this might work or work okay is because both of these filaments print at 235 degrees. So since I've only got one nozzle and one heater cartridge, I really can't run at different temperatures. So the fact that these print at the same temperature means, maybe, hey, you know, maybe this will work. You know, hey, maybe it won't, but nonetheless, I don't think anything horrible will happen. I don't think like a wormhole will open up and aliens will pour through and conquer the Earth, although the way things are in 2020, that might not be that big of a shock. So I'm going to print one of those... Um, those watch stands I like and I am going to that thing prints on its side and it's 50 millimeters high so on this printer if you're unfamiliar with it from the control panel you can tell it you want a mix and you can give it a, a gradient you can tell it start at ZX on Z height and then go up to the next Z height and over that distance in Z height give a smooth transition go from hundred percent on one and 0% on this one and slowly change the mix until you're 100% over here and 0 over here. And that's what I'm going to do. I am going to go from 0 to 10 millimeters, 0, sorry, 0 to 10 millimeters on the, with the PLA at 100%. And then I'm going to go the next 30 millimeters slowly changing the mix to point where, where I hit 40 millimeters. I'm 100% on the PETG in the last... 10 millimeters will be 100% PETG. So let's see what happens. Maybe we'll get our space aliens. Hang on. Okay, it's done. Let's get it off and have a look at it. First thing I notice is it's um, kind of blobby. But then again, that's been my, um, my overall luck with PETG. It always seems to come out stringy and blobby. There we go. So, you can see it's um, a yeah, fair stringy, stringy and blobby between the PETG part. So what happened was, what we did was we went up 10 millimeters in the white PLA. Then we transitioned over the next 30 millimeters, constantly changing the amount, the percentage, going down in the PLA and up in the PETG. And I showed you that one spot where it was about 75, 25 or therein until we got to the last 10 millimeters, which was all PETG. And you can kind of see, it's funny, the color changed very quickly from white to gray to black, but look at the shininess of it. It didn't get, it didn't stop being shiny until it was all the way up into the 100%, 100% um, PETG part. I find that kind of interesting. Now, on the sides, eh, 
kind of kind of the same thing, but it stayed shiny all the way up. That's kind of odd. It did that on the bottom, but um, once I clean it, whoops, nope, nope, it broke. It broke on me. So there you go. There you go. It was not very strong. Are these the same? Yep, those are the same. Uh, and that one too. So there you go. In this episode of just because you can doesn't mean you should. Really, um, it doesn't mean you should. So, there's our answer. Should you mix PLA and PETG? You can, but it doesn't really seem to lend itself well to strength during the, the transition period. It looks like it broke. It looks like it broke almost at the 50-50 mark in each case. So anyway, hope you had fun watching this video. I had fun making this. Please, um... Like and subscribe if you do, hit notifications, and I'll catch you guys the next time. Bye for now.